Time to make some props. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Initiative Modeler. Before I begin with my next project, I want to convey a big thank you to all of you who left such kind compliments about the Battlestar Galactica Viper Bay. I got such a huge positive response of that build, more than I ever had with any build I've put on the channel so far, between Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. And also want to mention that even Doug Drexler and Larry Stringer uh, sent me a message via Messenger to uh, compliment me about uh, the build. And Doug Drexler even placed it on his Facebook page, which was really cool to see that he shared it there. So both those guys are production designers who worked on Battlestar Galactica. Uh, many of you also may know them from the Star Trek series. Uh, I know they worked on Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Enterprise, and Voyager. So, uh, wow, just uh, fantastic to hear from them. So thank you, thank you very much for all of the kind responses. I really appreciate it. It was a fun project to work on. I know a lot of people were impressed by it. Um, it really turned out great. And uh, so, um, so thank you very much for that. Okay, I also wanted to uh, share a few pictures from WonderCon. Uh, you might recall at the end of the last video, I was uh, in my uh, Commander Adama original series uniform and mentioned I was headed up to WonderCon, which is a sister show of San Diego Comic Cons put on by the same folks. And just a few pictures to share with you here. First of all, with my friend John Day. He is not only a talented sci fi model builder, but he is also fantastic at making his own uniforms and costumes. In fact, he made this Battlestar Galactica jumpsuit that you see here. Really nice job with that. The jacket, by the way, is the jacket that was available from ads that were placed in magazines. I remember seeing one in Starlog. And uh, he told me when he received the jacket, it was a different shade of brown. He actually had to dye it to better replicate what was seen on screen. But really great job on this costume. And I thought I'd share a couple of my favorite uh, cosplays that I saw there. One was this Jedi Santa, <laughs> which I thought was pretty creative. And I thought this was cool. This is John Hammond, of course, from Jurassic Park. And he was accompanied by a dinosaur. And check out these guys who are dressed as a bunch of different Mandalorians. Really nice costumes there. Now, typically, people tend to gather outside the convention center like this to take pictures. Unfortunately, it was raining off and on, so we didn't get the opportunity to take as many pictures as I wanted. But uh, yeah, a lot of great cosplay going on there, as you can see. Also wanted to thank Larry, who's one of my subscribers here. Uh, this gentleman came up to me while I was walking around on the show floor, and uh, he wanted just to say hi and tell me how much he appreciated the channel. He actually is a comic book artist who's gotten into model building and also 3D printed figures. There. So thank you, Larry, for saying hi. One other gentleman did come up to me to say hi. Unfortunately, I can't recall his name. I think his name was Michael. If I got your name wrong, I, I apologize. But thank you very much for, for saying hello. I really do appreciate that. And lastly, I wanted to share with you here this poster from uh, Jason and the Argonauts. Uh, this is a, a vendor who is uh, frequently at WonderCon and also San Diego Comic-Con. Sells a bunch of, of different posters there. And uh, you might notice that I change this poster yearly. So far, it's been up to now just Star Trek posters, but uh, this one caught my eye. Yeah, really, really a nice uh, reprint of that movie poster. All right, we're going to get started here with my project. What I'm going to be working on here in this video is the stun gun and comlock kit from MPC. I know this is not a brand new kit. It was released sometime last year. Uh, there have been a few videos about these uh, kits already, but uh, I was actually debating whether or not to make a video of this, but this is a project uh, I, I'm going to be working on for a friend. And one thing that will differentiate this project versus others you might have seen is I'm going to be using some aluminum replacement parts. These parts are made by a gentleman named Mike Reeder. He's been producing these types of uh, uh, replacement parts for Space 1999 kits since the Eagle came out. I know he started off with the engine bells and he's gone on from there. Uh, in this instance, he's made now replacement parts for the emitters and the knobs for both the stun gun and the comlock here. Now, you know, looking at this kit, it's one of these that remind me very much of when I when I was a kid and watching to show how much I wanted a replica of the stun gun and the uh, comlock. I know they had a toy stun gun, but never came out with anything for the comlock. And through the years, they've made, of course, uh, resin replicas, uh, garage kits, all those types of things were available. But this is a really nice kit. You might recall I actually built the comlock already uh, for Wonderfest last year. Uh, Nick Tate autographed this one here that you see. And it's a really beautiful replica of the Comlock. So these are going to be static models now. I'm not going to be putting any fancy lights or electronics in them. Uh, we're going to start off with the stun gun first. And I'll show you the parts that come for the stun gun and also give you a look at the replacement aluminum parts. After the stun gun's completed, we'll move on then to the Comlock. 
Let's go ahead and get started. So there's actually not much to this model. This tree has the movable power setting switch along with the grip. There is a piece that attaches to the front tip along with some of the rectangular buttons that attach along the side of the laser. Now there are four additional rectangular buttons that attach along the grip of the laser and that's what these clear parts are for. I'll be painting those with to me as clear red, blue, yellow, and green. So here are the aluminum parts that we'll be using for the kit and as you can see they are beautifully finished. First is the power setting switch which comes assembled as you see here and you can see it easily slides back and forth. Now according to the instructions there is a difference between the switches seen in season 1 and 2. It appears that the part that slides back and forth was larger in the first season. This kit actually comes with both switches and even provides the builder the ability to change between them if you want to. To go one step further, they've even provided a plate that sits in place of a switch so that you can have a prop with no switch at all. The reason for this is that some of the props they used on a show didn't have a switch. I find it amazing they provided this level of detail. This aluminum piece here mirrors that of season two and will be permanently attached to our model. Here's a look at one of the knobs and one of the emitters. To adhere these to the model, Mike Reader suggests using JB Weld. And here are the chrome parts that come with the kit. You can see just how much better the aluminum parts look in comparison. If you are going to be using these parts, my recommendation is to get rid of the chrome finish and airbrush them with an aluminum paint. The chrome finish can easily be taken off by soaking these parts overnight in bleach. Well, one other thing I did get a hold of now are these paint masks from Aztec Dummy. Uh, Lou Dell also designed a set of masks that can be used basically to replace most of the decals that come with the model. So with the stun gun, we've got decals for the buttons, the rectangular buttons as well as the lines, uh, and also the circular buttons. And uh, the sheet comes with all of these here, so you can replace them with these vinyl pieces instead. He also includes these color vinyl stickers here that can go over the clear pieces for these buttons, but uh, rather than using those, I'm going to be using Tamiya's clear paint instead. These are the decals now provided for the laser. You can see the uh, decal here for the power switch. And then we also have those decals that uh, are made for the rectangular buttons as well and for the lines. And I'll go over what comes for the com lock here when I get to that build. So these are the two halves of the laser body and as the instructions show, the first step is to join them together. Now for this build, I am trying a different adhesive called Plastic Magic and this is something I stumbled across while watching a YouTube video about this kit. There is a gentleman by the name of Arctic Mother on YouTube who does a great job with this model and even takes the extra effort to light both the gun and the com lock. He really liked this adhesive so it prompted me to try it. And as you can see, just like the Tamiya product, this has a brush applicator. So I'm carefully applying it here. I did test this stuff prior and was really impressed with how quickly and firmly it held. I actually really like this stuff. One thing I do like is that it's just a tad bit heavier than Tamiya's extra thin cement. And if by chance you're interested in trying this stuff, I'll post a link to it below. Now I've also posted a link to Arctic Modeler's videos. I'd go ahead and check him out. I think you'll be impressed and appreciate his meticulous work. I am following a lot of his suggestions for my build here. Now there is an obvious seam here that needs to be addressed where the two halves join. So the first thing I'm going to do is to use the plastic cement to help out with this. Since it's a pretty tight seam, that might just be enough. Well, the cement wasn't enough, so I decided now to apply Vallejo's plastic putty. And as usual, after allowing this to dry, this was followed by some sanding. And this is how it looked once it was smoothed and primed. Well, you can see now the laser has been painted with the base color, which I chose to be this Mission Models High Speed Silver. And this is what the Arctic Modeler used on his. Now, I'm not sure if it's because I first started off with painting it black. I generally do that before applying a metallic color. Or if this is just dark to begin with, I'm, I'm just not sure, but it looks too dark. Uh, if you compare it to reference photos here from the Catacombs website, this is a website that has all kinds of reference pictures for Space 1999, you can see the laser is much brighter in color. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and use Vallejo Silver, just at least a misting of that, to brighten this up a bit. 
And let me go ahead and do that and show you the comparison here in a second. All right, this is what it looks like now after the Vallejo Silver has been applied. And I do think this looks much closer to the reference photos. You can see again, this is what it looked like with just the high speed silver. And the Vallejo Silver has definitely brightened it up. So I'm gonna stick with this. Okay, so I've installed the emitters now and they are looking pretty good. They are supposed to increase in height from top to bottom there. Now bear in mind these are a tight fit and one thing I neglected to do was to test fit these before addressing the seam. As you see here I had to use my X-Acto knife to carefully modify the opening so that I could slide them into place and I was a little concerned about cracking open the seam but thank goodness it all worked out I didn't have any problems. Now because as I said this is a pretty tight fit I did not end up using any adhesive. They're definitely not loose or going anywhere. Okay so as you can see I'm getting close to completion here now. What I'm doing here is attaching the clear buttons now to go on the sides of the grip. You can see they turned out pretty well. Uh, these were done by painting them with clear Tamiya color. Um, you can see here what I decided to do was to thin the Tamiya paint first with a little alcohol because these can go on pretty strong meaning they'll, they'll turn out fairly dark if you apply this paint without thinning at all. Uh, which sometimes is perfectly fine, uh, but these buttons aren't super dark, so I wanted to uh, gradually darken them to my liking. And so that was the purpose for using the alcohol to apply it first. And then what I did was I applied just a little bit of the paint without thinning, just to darken it a little bit more. And this is how they dried. All right, so uh, just uh, basically just adding some cement here to the little notches that are provided there to attach these on. And uh, the way that they are sequenced is blue at the bottom, green, yellow, and red. All right, well, this is how it's looking so far and uh, pretty much done. I just have the switch to put on the top there. So what I'm gonna do is finish that up and show you the completed project at the final reveal. Let's go ahead and move on now to the com lock. Well, I have the main body primed now with white and I have this primed with the uh, gray. I've got these buttons painted now. The only button that needs to be painted here is this one. It has to be a reddish orange. So those are all set to go. I do have some clear buttons that we need to work with, which I will do shortly. Uh, but first we're going to start off with applying the color for the main body. So for that, I'm going to actually assemble this temporarily here. And just to show how easy these parts go together, you can see it just snaps right in. And this slides into place. And uh, what's nice with this model, unlike the stun gun, is there are no seams to have to worry about here. It wasn't very difficult to work with the stun gun, but the seams are always kind of tedious and time consuming sometimes. Uh, but don't have to worry about that here. All these dividing lines are supposed to be here. That's how nice this kit is engineered. Uh, just to show you the completed comlock again, this is the one I did last year. By the way, if you're going to be using the parts included in the kit, you do want to get rid of the chrome for the uh, belt clip and this button but you'd want to leave the chrome finish for the end piece and this button here. So the body color is gonna be made up of a 50-50 mix of this medium gray and white. It's both from Tamiya. Uh, you'll notice that there is, or there are these lines here in between that also need to be painted the same color as the frame around the screen. And uh, so we're gonna go with this basalt gray, basalt gray from Vallejo for that. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the main color first and then we'll mask off for the lines accordingly. So I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. All right, well this is how it turned out. To me, a paint went on as usual without any problems. I applied also the gray striping as you can see there and I also painted that frame around the screen. All right, I'm going to set this aside now while we move on to the clear parts. All right, here we have the two sets of buttons now. Uh, for the larger rectangular ones here, we've got one that has to be a reddish orange, the other one has to be white. And out of the two smaller ones here, we've got one that has to be green and one that's gonna be white there. So we'll work on the red one first, and the plan is actually just to paint it from the inside here with a reddish orange uh, transparent paint. And uh, since I don't have orange on hand, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix um, red and clear yellow here and uh, I'm going to add a drop of white to the mixture so that it's a bit opaque. Okay and here's how the clear buttons turned out. So I've got the orange on top, white on the bottom here, green and white there with the green. Uh, same thing I took the clear Tamiya color and mixed just a drop of white to make it more opaque. So the next step now is to put all the buttons in place and move on with uh, putting the comlock together. All 
Alright, so all the buttons are in place, and for extra measure, I ended up using two-part epoxy to secure everything, and use JB Well for the metal pieces there. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry overnight, and we'll continue on in the morning. Well, the final decal is going to be the one I created of Nick Tate. Uh, I'm going to put that on the side just as I did with my other one. Uh, the screen uh, is this right here, and you're supposed to put the decal on this side. But what I've decided to do, the decal is actually a little larger than this uh, little window provided. So I decided to go ahead and place the decal onto a white backing. And then this is going to go right into here like that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish everything up here and I'll show you the completed projects in just a second. Alright, well here we have the completed laser and conlock kit from Space 1999. This kit is produced by MPC Round 2 and they are easy kits to put together, are well designed, and when completed, make fine one-to-one -one accurate replicas of the iconic props. Let's first take a look at the laser. There's not much to review here with construction as this is a very simple kit consisting of just two halves along with the buttons and knobs that are needed to be attached. The main challenge is simply just addressing the seam, which wasn't too hard to do since the two halves are a good tight fit. Painting is pretty easy as well, consisting of just two colors, silver and black. I did, however, run across a little bit of an issue with the color that I chose, which was Mission Models High Speed Silver. That choice was based on what I had seen on a YouTube video by the Arctic Modeler, but when I applied it, I felt that the color was a little bit too dark for my taste. This no doubt was contributed to by first applying a black undercoat, as I typically do with metallic paints, but even after spraying the color onto some white styrene, it still seemed a bit too dark for me. To remedy this situation, I sprayed on a light mist of Vallejo Silver, which did a nice job to brighten the finish to my satisfaction. As with most models, unless you have the exact color specifications, color choice is very much what one feels looks right to them. My recommendation is to experiment with this a little bit. If I were to build another and chose to stick with the Mission Models brand, I would choose something with a bit lighter shade from their collection. An alternative would be to mix Vallejo Silver with Steel. I think that their silver alone would be a bit too bright. Now, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, I built this for a friend, and he wanted to replace the knobs and switches with the metal pieces produced for this kit by Mike Reeder. And I have to say, they are a really nice touch. Mike did a great job with replicating the look of the parts and are sized just right. Hardly any modification was needed to install these, with the exception of making the openings just slightly larger to accommodate the emitters. And I recommend that you save yourself a little stress and don't do what I did. Make these modifications before addressing the seam and painting. Since I had the paint and supplies here, I built a second laser from my own collection, but I decided to use the plastic parts instead, and I thought this would be interesting to show you how they compare. The first thing I did was to remove the chrome finish, and this can be done by soaking them in bleach, or in my case, purple power degreaser. Once this was done, the knobs and sliding switch were painted with alclad aluminum, and this is how they turned out. They might not have the look of the brushed metal, but as has been my experience with Alclad, these paints do provide a very convincing metal finish. Another variation from the first laser was to use a sliding switch and side buttons as they were configured in the first season. The difference being that the sliding switch was a bit bulkier and the buttons on the side a little taller. Everything else was painted the same. And here they are side by side, and as you can see, they each result in a very nice replica. So if you just can't swing the purchase of the metal pieces, you can still achieve a good result using the Alclad paints. And another thing to note here was that I used the masks from Aztec Dummy, designed of course by Lou Del Masso. They have a nice gloss finish that makes them look a bit better than the decals. Vinyl stickers are also provided for the colored rectangular knobs, but I decided to paint those with Tamiya clear paints instead. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on now to the COM lock, which has a lot more details and features, but still is a very simple kit to assemble. The model is nicely designed so that you have absolutely no seams to address. All of the lines and separations between pieces are ones that are supposed to be there. The kit was painted using a combination of a 50-50 mix of Tamiya's medium gray and white. Again, a recommendation I took up based on the Arctic Modeler's videos. He did add a little yellow to his mix to warm it up a bit, but I chose not to do that. Compared to the reference pictures, either way you go, I think you end up with a color combination that is a great approximation of the prop's actual color. 
As with the laser, I use Lou Dalmasso's vinyl replacements here as well, which provide these black stripes on the side, the circle and square markings, this C marking, and the numbers on the keypad. They again result in a very nice look that is superior to the decals, especially with the keypads. They really do end up resembling the numbered keypads that we all remember from those old push button telephones. As with the laser, the replacement metal parts were used here too, and these consist of two round knobs, the belt clip, and the end piece at the bottom of the comm lock. Again, Mike did a great job replicating these parts and they are sized accordingly. Absolutely no modifications were needed for these at all. They look really good and they are a really nice touch. Comparing this now to the one I had autographed which used the plastic pieces, I think the metal pieces definitely show a difference in my opinion, particularly with the end piece. Based on pictures of the original prop, it does have a chrome piece at the end, but I feel that the plastic part just looks cheap in comparison to the aluminum piece. I just might order a replacement piece for my own, or at least refinish this one at some point. Overall, I think these are great little kits that results in some really nice replicas to add to your Space 1999 collection. Okay guys, well that is a wrap for now. I hope you guys enjoyed following along. Uh, by the way, a couple things to mention here. If you're interested in getting hold of those metal pieces, I've left a link to Mike Reader's Facebook page. It's called Mike's uh, Machining and Custom Works. And that, there you'll find information about how to get a hold of those as well as other items he's got available. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention here too is that the decal that I used here on the comic of Alan Carter is something that I did create on Photoshop. It did not come with the model kit. The only ones that come with the model kit are the ones for Koenig and Russell. So if you are interested in the file of that decal, I'm more than happy to send it off to you. I always make these uh, available to my subscribers. Just drop me an email and I'll get that off to you so you can print one for yourself. So this was definitely a fun project to work on and I'm glad I was able to get it done in plenty of time for Wonderfest. Uh, these are going to go to my friend Gordon. Gordon, uh, so I'll ship them off here real soon and because uh, I know he's interested in getting uh, that comma autograph by uh, Nick Tate uh, as I did and uh, Nick Tate is by the way going to be at the show again and uh, so if you get a chance to get to the show I'd highly recommend dropping by to say hello he's really gracious to the fans and, and so happy to meet you guys now speaking of Wonderfest as you know I won't be able to attend this year I've mentioned this a couple of times uh, Wonderfest unfortunately conflicts with a vacation trip we have to Spain so because I am not attending that show. I'm not quite in high gear as I was last year trying to get a bunch of projects finished for that show. However, I do have something else in line for me and that is the San Diego Comic Con Art Show and that'll be coming up in July. I've uh, exhibited at this show several times in the past, most recently in 2022 where uh, I actually sold an oil painting there which is really cool. Uh, but this year what I plan to do is not only exhibit uh, a couple of oil paintings but also some 3D printed projects. In fact, I know you've been hearing the 3D printer in the background. It's working hard on a piece for that particular project and uh, I'll be posting a video of that one uh, coming up soon on the channel. Another project that I have in mind too is this here. Uh, this is a little test print of this ship. You might recognize it. It's from the second season of Buck Rogers. Uh, not much that I liked about the second season of Buck Rogers, but one of one was this ship here. Uh, this was close flown by the character Hawk on the TV show. And as I said, it's just a test print. I just wanted to see how it all pieced together. The one I'll be printing and building uh, will be a little larger than this. So that'll be coming on the channel. Now something else that's come up several times is a request about making a painting video. And uh, so I think this would be a good opportunity to, to do that. Uh, one of the paintings that I have planned for the uh, Comic-Con art show I think would be a good subject for this. And uh, this is really just a video that'll show my process from beginning to end as I create a, an oil painting. So uh, that'll be coming up on the channel as well. Uh, speaking of oil painting, just to share one with you here that I'm working on. This is not a sci-fi related oil painting but this is of a beach uh, in Kauai, one of the many picturesque beaches there in Kauai. Uh, this is not anywhere near completion. I'm still working on it, but uh, oftentimes when I travel now, I'll uh, take pictures as many of you do. And as I go through them, I'm usually inspired to create an oil painting from one or two of them. And that, that happens to be one of them there. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks again for watching as always. If you have any questions about this particular project that we worked on here, feel free to contact me here or email me at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.